Good afternoon. Thank you very much for that introduction, Barbara. Um, and apologies for the, the title, but it felt good at the time. Um, <laughs> just to briefly locate you, I'm sure you all know where, where we are, but um, this is uh, Ed, Edgar's um, 1765 map of Edinburgh, a detail of St Giles and the Royal Mile, the Cowgate, and obviously our site is just within the Flodden Wall at this point, and this is before its rebuilding um, in the late 18th century and early 19th century by William Adamond and William Playfair. Um, so the, from, from map evidence, the configuration of the um, university site is, is uh, well known. Um, our project um, related to the fairly unsightly nature of the interior of the courtyard of, of the, uh, the quadrangle, um, graveled, um, long graveled most of the 20th century. Um, there had been a, a long-standing wish to try and complete the Playfair scheme um, and pave the courtyard in a, in a suitably um, respectful manner, respectful of the, this, the very fine um, Adam and Playfair architecture surrounding the quadrangle. Um, and so our project related entirely to um, the repaving of the interior of the quad. Um, this was a, a project um, sponsored by a, an anonymous benefactor, I still don't know who he or she may be, um, and a scheme carried out by Simpson and Brown Architects um, for the university. And the, the quadrangle um, is obviously sort of elongated. Um, the staircases you'll need to um, remember for navigation purposes. Um, the, the, the new scheme is simply uh, self-explanatory and um, a central glass, glass area with a, a very a plain Caithness uh, slab uh, paving scheme and the visualisation. Um, having, having created chaos in the courtyard for most of last year, um, this scheme is now sort of finally coming, coming together and the curb has, has, has now been put in and it won't be long before the actual paving, so you'll have your quadrangle back soon enough. Now, clearly this, this has been uh, an important site um, with a whole sequence of historic buildings um, well attested by the map evidence. Um, any work within the quadrangle would, would um, trigger an archaeological evaluation exercise and desk assessment and, and so of course we went through this. Um, and working closely with uh, John Lawson, city archaeologist at all stages. Um, the first general view we have of what we would recognise as, as the university site is Gordon of Roffey May's uh, 1647, um, showing three um, very nicely laid out quadrangles. Um, this is rather idealistic. Um, you have the, the high college, the high college quad, the lay college, the low college, and this is Printing House Yard, <laughs> which appears far more grandly there than it ever was. Um, at the bottom, obviously, you, you have the the 16th century Flodden Wall Pottero Port and what is now Chambers Street running across the top here. Far better um, early source is this by John Laurie, 1767, um, a survey of the, of the university buildings. Um, having pinpointed um, a number of structures, it is proving to be very remarkably uh, accurate as a representation um, and also clearly showing all the, the principal subdivisions within um, buildings and between buildings. Um, now the desk exercise was simply to, to transport that and put it over the existing quadrangle footprint and uh, there you have it. Um, and so in terms of predicting what we would like to have <laughs> encountered, um, clearly you've got part of the Lay College quadrangle within the northwest corner of, our, of the site. This is the existing balustrade, so we're just below the balustrade is our site boundary. Um, the 1642 library occupying most of the northern side, the 1617 building or old library on that side, um, a courtyard referred to in some documents as the, sunk court, the sunken courtyard, um, slightly off our site with the principal's house um, and obviously TV at chambers and the, uh, the other high, high quadrangle buildings. So we've got almost the entirety of the high quadrangle within the uh, site area. Um, the origins of the site 
and it lay outside the the, me the medieval city wall, but became enclosed by the the later medieval the uh, the Flodden Wall um, from from the beginning of the 16th century onwards. Um, the site was known to have um, been occupied by um, St Mary's in the Fields, um, latterly known as Kirk Kirkerfields Church. Um, this an appalling <laughs> representation. Um, based on a, a source that um, you'll see in a moment, but Pottero Port here, so it's occupying the angle of the Flodden Wall, which is running behind it. Um, evocative, but a very bad representation. Um, and so on the basis of this evidence, there's approximately where we thought the church may have been, the Flodden Wall, um, and then two or three different sets of representations of the college buildings from various sources, including the Lorry one. Um, we targeted as much as we could, these the principal lines and, and so on of these structures of evaluation trenches. Um, and so the disruption and destruction begins. Um, the evaluation trenches rarely f encountered anything of particular um, significance, um, just a, a mass of later services, <coughs> drainage ducts and, and so on, um, for a great part of science straight on to the natural um, subsoil. Um, and really only in one area we, we encountered very meaningful um, structural remains, um, lime bonded walls of, of apparently early character, um, enough to suggest um, to John Lawson that a watching brief was, was essential on, on the works, but we didn't have particularly high hopes um, at this stage um, that much would survive. And so really our work was monitoring a general um, strip of the overburden, which was only, only about 20 or 30 centimeters in depth. Uh, the gravel was taken off and then um, a makeup level um, stripped off mechanically until archaeological levels were encountered. And so this, this process um, you know, gradually sort of extended around the site and increasingly we, were, we encountered, you can see masonry, the whiter masonry remains poking up. And as the site was uh, stripped, more and more um, was revealed until eventually they the contractors gave up and handed the site over for us to clear it. So over three or four months last uh, summer and autumn, um, we under undertook this large excavation. Now this, this is a, um, the natural topography, sort of, um, this is the west end here, um, slopes down both towards the Cowgate to the north and um, to South Bridge to the east. Um, and so a purpley area, that's actually um, bedrock. Um, and um, sadly, that, that is the site of the, uh, of the St. Mary's Church, of which no remains were encountered within the excavation. Um, the orangey band of the, of the subsoils, um, again, um, scalped, very little remaining. Um, a large quarry pit on the site of the church, just to add insult to injury. Um, probably a 17th century date. And then towards the bottom, you have um, a surviving area the tail end of the St. Mary's in the Fields Cemetery, um, running as a diagonal band across the site. This is simply um, relates to the, uh, the lowering of the courtyard when Playfair put this staircase arrangement in. He took over two meters of, of fill out of the site um, and, and shaved off the archaeology at that point. So we really just have the, the tail end. But survival was, was best on the downslope side, which is the north side of the, uh, the High College quadrangle and at the eastern end. So our finest primary source for the site is, is this, uh, the famous illustration of the, the murder of Lord Darnley, um, an eyewitness um, um, examination of the site um, from uh, 1567. Um, Lord Darnley was, um, was apparently blown up. Um, he, he had been staying unwelcome at Holyrood. Um, he was staying in the... the um, the buildings um, surrounding the church, and that building was, was blown up, but um, Darnley himself was found on the other side of the Flodden Wall in an orchard, um, unscathed by the explosion, and um, apparently strangled, and so it was <laughs> a political assassination and one of our um, most wonderful sources for the site, but it tells us a great deal about the site. Um, if you can read the drawing, um, it's problematic. Um, this is the Pottero Port, the Flodden Wall, which abruptly turns a right angle, and so the perspective has been rotated by 90 degrees. Um, 
and what it is actually showing is um, the ruined St Mary's Church. It was uh, um, damaged in the 1540s by the Marquis of Hartford. Um, there are associated buildings. Um, in the early 16th century, the church became a collegiate um, foundation, and canons and prebends um, were provided with accommodation, and this was the provost's um, house. Um, the whole complex and infirmary is known, and um, associated buildings um, around um, the churchyard and, and graveyard. Um, a wonderful view. It's is a, an eyewitness account to actual burial within our cemetery, which I don't know if that's a, a unique um, from that period, um, a unique thing. Um, very clearly shrouded um, burials. Um, so we have this uh, collegiate um, complex that uh, underlies the, the, the later university. This is a, an early 20th century de-stretching of that drawing, so that's correctly oriented. Um, of interest are these, this boundary down here, um, which archaeologically may, may be uh, what we found um, a trackway, a, a roadway. <coughs> so the, the cemetery itself, um, where burials weren't shaved off, they were only 20 centimetres or so below the, the gravel that people have been walking over for decades. Um, remarkable that um, they should survive so well. Um, a, a typical suburb, urban um, cemetery, much intercutting, um, a whole range of um, ages and, and sexes, not, nothing to do with um, um, the, the, the prebends or canons. Um, it's, it's an urban population. Um, much sort of intercutting and then reinterment of uh, charnel. Preservation generally good. One or two, um, there's, there's a lot on this, I'm, I'm whizzing through this, so my apologies. Um, this is a, a triple burial where an um, adult male and adult, uh, adult female holding hands. Um, with a six-year-old um, individual uh, laid on, on top, all certainly within the same cut. Um, and grave goods, well, a number of the graves, three or four of the graves produced um, evidence of these small copper alloy uh, rings, um, in the, in generally in the, the torso area, and at the moment we're not absolutely sure what they are, but they may be um, fastenings for the shroud. Um, of the shroud burials, and quite a number of shroud pins as well. Um, and again, a detail of that, of that view. <laughs> Some dating evidence from the graves, um, a James IV um, so-called cross regal penny, um, 1460s, 80s, um, and those, just very briefly, the, uh, um, the cemetery population there was very good, um, in some areas, very good intercutting, um, very distinct um, alignment, um, alignments appearing as well, um, enough to try and um, propose four, four phases of, of, of burial. Um, from, from the yellow ones, uh, phase four, <coughs> um, three of those individuals um, were identified as David Henderson doing the osteology um, as having syphilis. Um, which is, of course, very good dating evidence, um, post-dating the discovery of the Americas. Um, and ultimately, we'll, we'll try and carbon date, um, carbon date a number of the, in, the individual. Um, the um, foundation of Kirker Fields um, may, may be as early as the, the 13th century, so hopefully we'll, we'll get some very good um, phasing from that group of individuals. OK, so the, the church was in this area. Our burials were surviving downslope in this area. Um, we found part of what appears to be a, a cemetery boundary wall at this end, and another uh, major sublinear feature, um, mortar bonded walling, um, two sides of a mortar bonded, basically um, walls on two sides of a, of a what proved to be a, a roadway. Now this is running um, not, not quite east-west, and this is at a slight angle to, to practically everything else on site. Um, and here you can see that the metalling, the actual walling itself, um, and the second wall coming through here. So there's a roadway running through, and the, the 1617 building just crashes straight across that. So it's, it's clearly a, a, a medieval um, feature. 
and we haven't assessed the pottery from, from within the various levels of makeup, but it was a, a very substantially built uh, feature. Um, levels of messing, three or four episodes. Um, this is the robber trench for the, the wall and a deeply cut sort of terrace into natural on that side. <coughs> um, okay, so the roadway is running through here. Um, in the northwest corner of the site, um, we came across our earliest uh, structural remains, apart from that walling. Um, I'm sadly overlain by one of the Playfair stairs, but on either side of the stair, <coughs> um, very well preserved um, um, lime bonded uh, walls um, of a very substantial building. Um, this is shooting straight under the stairs here, and clearly um, from, from later sources, this is Hamilton House. Um, which is the, the Duke of Chateau Rose uh, urban residence, the Hamilton family's sort of main residence in, in Edinburgh, um, well documented. And what we have here is a jam at one end of the building. This is the interior of a large fireplace, a springing of the fireplace arch surviving. In the shadows there, a broken off uh, slop sink. And so um, a kitchen uh, wing within that jam, um, which is up, up in here. And so at the other side of the stairs, we've got the tail end of this, and you'll notice on the same alignment as the roadway, um, of this, um, this great walling. Um, the purple appears to be 17th century work, um, so we've got heavily remodeled. The building was reused, and we know that from sources. Um, here, an octagonal um, staircase um, added at one end. Um, this, the base of another staircase, an external staircase, which appears in the Roffey May view. Um, later vaulted cellars put in the vault springs uh, still surviving. Um, this is um, of, a, of a number of finds of this, this sort of gen general period pre-university. Um, this, this is the, the star find, <laughs> um, which is um, a, a, a ballast stemmed uh, goblet. Um, the knot in the middle is, is moulded with um, a lion mask um, of a well-known type. Um, very, very rare if, if, if found at all in Scotland. Um, it's a Facon de Venise um, type, which just means a fashion of Venice, but was probably made um, in Antwerp or, or Northern Europe um, <coughs> somewhere, and of, of a very high status, and clearly um, this was found ex situ in, in, in demolition deposits, so it doesn't have a good context, but uh, it does signify um, some status of occupation on the site. Um, the, the college was um, the ground for the college was seeded in 1582, and the first uh, university buildings um, were being erected in uh, the following year. Um, Hamilton House, which is here, was incorporated, as were some of the surviving collegiate buildings, um, including the, the principal's house, which was in this area here. Um, and again, the lorry plan showing showing the very piecemeal evolution. The buildings are very different in character, and as, as with all sort of academic institutions, the funding was an issue, and they could build um, as, they, as they had the, the time and money. Um, this is um, just one view of the, the southeast corner of the quadrant, um, the TV at Chambers building, um, the relocated Pottero Court in the Flodden Wall, and then that's the, the principal's house, um, the university principal's house in a view by um, Syme of 16, um, 1817, just, just before its demolition. Um, sadly, that lay just out, out with our site. Um, and Andrew Fraser's um, very good book, The Building of uh, Old College, um, goes into the, uh, um, the history of, this, of, of the early buildings in some depth. <coughs> um, Playfair took stones from, from some of the buildings as they were being demolished. Um, this is from the, the big 1617 range, um, wonderfully starting Sonatus Populus K Edinburghensis, etc. Um, and the actual date, date stone for the 1617 building. Um, so here we are in the very northwest quadrant. Um, you have the wall of Hamilton House running out, and this is the, the base of a, a turnpike stair, um, a, a stone built entrance, cobbling in the courtyard. Um, so there you go again, there's, there's the, the stair. And then this is the Lay College Court with some of its um, cobbling still in situ, the sets, these are wind sets, and the remains of, of a staircase. And this is the staircase that goes between the High College Court and the Lay College Court. Um, very 
scant surviving remains, but um, just enough to demonstrate its position. And then the boundary wall between the two courts, so there was a, quite a level drop on, on either side. And again, that's the staircase, and that's the little boundary wall. And the turnpike stair tower, just, just there. So corresponding very well with what we know of the site. Um, along the north and uh, northeast parts of the site, you have the uh, 1642 library. Um, in a number of sondages, we picked up its, its, um, its south wall. Um, it ran into the slightly earlier 1617 building, which at one point was the library, the university halls, various different uh, functions, extended laterally as an observatory tower. Um, and you can have a good view here of the stairs down into the sunk court, which is uh, shown on various plans. Um, that building survived into the 1820s and was um, <coughs> represented in a, a, a series of views. Um, this is W.H. Lizard's. Um, this is a propaganda, this is the university fundraising propaganda to show the disgusting state of the old buildings and uh, <laughs> remarkably sort of connected by, by sort of precarious passageways um, to the, to the new, new buildings by, by Playfair and Adam. So, um, this is, um, we knew from our various sondages, and so our, our mission was simply to test and get as much information as quickly as possible from the site. Um, we saw an opportunity to um, get something more from, from this area, clearly well-preserved surviving remains um, cobbling encountered in that sondage. Um, and so partly as a voluntary project and partly as a training exercise for undergraduates at the University um, Department of Archaeology, we excavated in the final week of the work, the entire sunken court area, and found absolutely remarkable the, the preservation of the courtyard surface, um, slightly damaged by, by later um, stone line drains, but essentially complete. And here you have the wall of the 1617 building bounding its east side, massively built structure. Um, 1617 building, and these are these are later additions into into the. So that's that's the wall of the sunken courtyard. This is um, a stair between the high court and the sunken courtyard, and these are secondary buildings built up within the courtyard area. Um, again, the, the turnpike staircase inside that one, uh, 18th century buildings. Um, and here you can see very clearly the the staircase. Um, from the early engraved views of this frontage, it's clear that this was a, a symmetrical sort of set piece. The entrance here, you can see the paving slabs on axial arrangement with the staircase. So it was quite a, an architectural set piece that was um, damaged when they erected this up against the frontage. <coughs> and in plan, so the purple is the, uh, the 17th century uh, walling surviving. Um, and we just caught the very edge. This, this relates to the Lorry plan very well, but the, the high trance, this was the passageway between the the High College and the Printing House Yard, which is somewhere behind the curtain, which we didn't, <laughs> we didn't see um, out with our sight. Um, and really that's, that's sort of us towards the, the end of the, uh, the excavation overall. A um, little word about, this is um, Adam's original proposal for Old College, um, a two-courted a two um, arrangement, and the entrance as existing um, from the east. Um, this was never, never uh, fully realised, obviously, but um, parts of the complex you know, were completed by Adam in yellow, and he sort of leapfrogged behind uh, you know, the surviving buildings, which were st still in use while these were being built. Um, and latterly, a chemistry block was, was built here. This is behind the library building. Um, when we came to excavate, um, uh, this is um, the junction with Hamilton House, just, just behind there in that trench we saw earlier. Um, on the floor um, of the library, um, we came up down across, upon, this is our quick snap of our finds tray at that moment, um, a whole series of rather worrying looking materials, um, at which point we stopped the excavation, um, put on the, the gloves and recovered some of these, um, and sent to the university um, laboratories and they came up with a whole series of different identifications, including so cobalt uh, compounds, arsenic, um, and uh, various mercury compounds as well. Um, absolutely lethal combination, a major health and safety, safety issue. And thankfully um, for us, we were able to just backfill at that point, but having recovered this sample. 
Um, and as you can also see, there are some ceramic vessels and uh, bits, of, bits of glass apparatus um, cleaned up. These are some of them, um, a number with residues of those materials on them, um, clearly scientific apparatus. Um, the 1642 library was demolished in the mid-1820s, and so these are the contents of the lower level of the cellar um, at that point in time. Um, one of the fragments, this is uh, thanks to uh, George Haggerty, um, a retort. Um, we ha had fragments of this, so we didn't actually find this, but fragments of, of this, of a particular type of ceramic being patented or being pioneered by, by Wedgwood and supplied to a very small number of scientists at the end of the 18th century. Um, so a very interesting group. The, the glassware, um, looking more 18th century than early 19th century, um, but, but the initial look at the documents um, suggests that this was the storeroom for the, chemi the chemistry, chemistry laboratory um, that had been run by Joseph Black, um, just on the other side of the printing house courtyard, immediately adjacent to this, this cellar, which was accessed at that level from the north. Um, and uh, there he is himself. And if so, it's, it's a fairly remarkable discovery, one of the great names of Enlightenment uh, science. Um, I think it's fairly clear these are, these are likely to be his materials. I mean, it's, it's very specifically documented. So one, one particular um, discovery. Um, this is um, Playfair's scheme from the 1820s, um, 1810 to 1820, and this, this is more or less as it was realized. Um, I'm nearly finished. <laughs> um, um, the early Ordnance Survey map shows um, what's significant here is the arrangement of stairs. There are far more staircases than there are now, the corner stairs having been removed in the 1950s. Um, and photographs survive of these. It must have been a very cluttered courtyard at that stage. Um, and within the, the angles of each corner, um, the, the footings of these same stairs. <coughs> And fairly well preserved, and um, a great network of stone line drains of the Adam period and the, the Playfair period. So there's a whole study of uh, drainage, drainage technology in this site as well. Um, finishing up, this is um, the, sort of the palimpsest of the various <laughs> phases and episodes of work. A very complex picture, um, fairly recently disentangled, we, we think. Um, there's a great deal of uh, post ex work to do on, on the finds, on particularly the historical records. Um, so we're, we're ahead of ourselves, and that um, much of this is very, very well documented in the university archives. Um, and so we should uh, be able to name the, the professor and the, the benefactor for each element of the, of the complex as it evolved um, and its function and, and so on. So it's a, it's a wonderful um, story, a great privilege to work. and work on the site and Edinburgh University have um, gone out of their way to, to, to um, facilitate this. So it's a, a dream project in, in many ways. Um, not always dream weather, um, not always dream press coverage. <laughs> um, so the exact site where Darnie was murdered. Um, thankfully we didn't quite get to this area, the anatomy theatre of Birkenhair fame, and the press would have had a complete field day. Thank you very much.